Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9to5toys, and finally, Razer has cut the cord on three of its most iconic peripherals. With the Black Shark V2 Pro, the Death Adder V2 Pro, and the Black Widow V3 Pro. With Razer's hyperspeed wireless across the board on all these devices, these new variants are a great way to clean up a workstation or a battle station. So let's check them out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. That's right, Razer is calling this their wireless flagship lineup. And with an iconic mouse like the Death Adder, one of their first keyboards here, which has been revitalized a couple of times, and their reborn Black Shark V2 headset, uh, it's a absolutely great lineup. So let's go right down the line and start with the Black Shark V2 Pro. If you missed it, the Black Shark V2 and Black Shark V2X came out very recently and have gotten a lot of great press as a really great headset. The original Black Shark was pretty popular because of its helicopter kind of inspired design and just as its performance as a competitive gaming headset. And the V2 added some great features with the THX spatial audio via the USB sound card and the comfortable design and microphone as well. Now with the V2 Pro, you still get all of those great features just in a wireless design. So you're still getting that THX spatial audio and all those fine-tuned audio profiles that come along with it. And because it has a very similar design, the V2 Pro is one of the most comfortable gaming headsets I've used as well. It's light and simple with easily adjustable ear cups here on the side. On the left of the headset are all the controls. There's a large dial for volume, which has a notch at 50%, and a port for the removable mic, a 3.5 millimeter plug, micro USB port for charging, mic mute button, and power button. Taking a look at the rest of the design here, you can see there's no RGB on the Black Shark V2 Pro. And as you can see, the logo has been blacked out on here on the side of the ear cup. So as I turn it, you can kind of see it pop up there, but it's not gonna stand out as much as a bright green logo. As far as battery life on the Black Shark V2 Pro, you can expect about 24 hours of charge. And thankfully with the USB-C port, you can just plug it in and use it while it is charging. So if you do find your battery getting low, you can just plug it in and keep on gaming. So in my experience, wireless and everything with this has worked absolutely flawlessly. The microphone still sounds great, and we'll do a sound test here. And here we'll do a quick sound test on the microphone of the Black Shark V2 Pro, so you can get an idea of what that sounds like. And we'll hop over to Synapse and kind of go through some of the settings over there, so you can get an idea of what all tweaks you can do to the microphone. You can see that in the microphone, you can obviously adjust the volume, which is pretty easy. There is a voice gate, which works really well. I was playing some Call of Duty with my brother using the green clicky switches. I had this set to medium, and he wasn't hearing any of the clicky sounds from the keyboard coming through when I wasn't speaking, so that's really nice. Going down into enhancements, we have vocal normalization, which kind of evens out your voice. And going down a little bit further, we have the equalizer, which you can make a whole bunch of settings. So right now we are in default. Now we'll go over to mic boost, so you can hear what that sounds like. And here we're over in broadcast. Now over to conference. And of course you can make a custom setting if you want as well. So there's quite a bit you can do within Synapse to tweak the sound of the microphone and make it sound best for whatever you're doing. And beyond just the microphone, the headset itself sounds incredible. With that full customizability within Synapse, there's a lot you can do to tweak the audio and the THX audio profiles are really great for competitive gaming. Now one thing to keep in mind here, uh, the price on this is $180. And so if that's a little bit too much for you, you can get all the same functionality in a wired version with the regular Black Shark V2. So if you want all that stuff, but you know can't afford $180, which is quite a bit of money, then I would definitely recommend for $100, the Black Shark V2 is an incredible headset. But if you wanna cut all the cords and want the most convenience you can get, then you've definitely found it with the Black Shark V2 Pro. All right, and moving on, let's take a look at something I've been really excited about, the Death Adder V2 Pro. As you can see, we have a little bit of RGB on here on the design, on the logo back here. There's nothing on the scroll wheel. And taking a look at the sides, it does have a kind of grippy texture to it. So hopefully that'll be a little bit nicer for FPS players who want to make sure they have a really good grip. The rest of the mouse is pretty standard as far as the death adder. There's, you know, nothing too surprising here. We of course have the two side buttons, the two DPI buttons, the scroll wheel, two large mouse buttons. And underneath we have the profile button, and then we also have a switch for Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz, which is their hyperspeed wireless. 
On the bottom, we also see the little compartment to store the dongle if you don't want to use that. And then we also see that it will accept Razer's wireless charging dock, which we have set up here. It doesn't come with the mouse, but it is available on Razer's website. So because this is the Death Adder V2, it is using the Focus Plus 20K DPI sensor, and then also using optical switches, which the Death Adder V2 Pro has a newer second generation optical switch, which they say has better feedback for feel and also sound. That's something I had mentioned in my review of the wired Death Adder V2, was that the right mouse button felt a little bit harder to actuate than the left mouse and led to some missed clicks and you know missed shots. But that is definitely not the case with the V2 Pro. I'd say the mouse buttons feel incredible, and this mouse has been just great to use. At 88 grams, it's not Razer's lightest mouse, but that is pretty good for a wireless mouse. And just like with the Black Shark V2 Pro, you are paying more for the wireless connection here. So the normal wired Death Adder V2 comes in at $70, while the Death Adder V2 Pro is going to cost you $130. It's that convenience thing, you know, if you really want to cut the cord and set up a really clean workstation or battle station, then this is definitely the way to go. But you can still get all of that ergonomic design and feel and functionality with the wired version as well. Battery life for the Death Adder V2 is up to 120 hours on Bluetooth or up to 70 hours on hyperspeed wireless, which I would assume also depends a little bit on what kind of RGB you have going on here. It does also come with a SpeedFlex cable with a micro USB connection if you need to charge while gaming. All right, and lastly, rounding out the wireless flagship announcement from Razer, is the Black Widow V3 Pro. As you can see, it is a full-size keyboard with media keys up here in the upper right, hyperspeed wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, and full per-key RGB. The Black Widow V3 Pro has a lot to offer, but also comes in at a high price at $230. $230 is a lot for a keyboard, but as far as top tier and wireless keyboards, you know, that's not too far out of the ordinary. The aluminum body feels solid, and the layout is very simple and clean. The body style reminds me a lot of the Huntsman Elite. Actually, these media keys up here are pretty much exactly the same. But taking a look at the profile, it actually reminds me a lot of the Razer Turret, which was the wireless keyboard for Xbox. On the left of the keyboard is the switch for power or the different connection modes. On the front of it, on the left side, we have the USB-C port. And on the bottom, we have the risers for setting the keyboard at different angles, as well as a little compartment for the wireless dongle if you want to store it on the keyboard. There are two different switch options available on the Black Widow V3 Pro. You can opt for Razer's green clicky switches or a yellow linear, which has been updated with silicone sound dampeners for a smoother and quieter linear experience. I went with the green clicky switches just because I'm still not totally a fan of linear switches. I feel I find myself misclicking often. I found the green clicky switches to sound and feel great. So we'll do a quick sound test so you can hear how those sound. They've also been updated with a clear switch housing to let the RGB shine through brighter for a more brilliant RGB display. Personally, I've been using a lot of smaller keyboards like the Drop Alt, which is a 65%, and the Huntsman Mini, which is a 60%. I play a lot of FPS games at 400 DPI, so, you know, those big mouse sweeps, uh, I found myself hitting the keyboard every now and then, so that's not going to be an issue for everybody, but it was definitely something I noticed, and one of the reasons I've been enjoying using a smaller keyboard like the Drop Alt or the Huntsman Mini. But obviously having dedicated media keys, the number pad, all of your navigation buttons here is really handy for a workspace environment. Battery life varies greatly on the Black Widow V3 Pro depending on how bright you have the lights on here. So with all the lighting turned off, the V3 Pro can get up to 192 hours of battery life, which is pretty incredible. But then for example, if you have the spectrum cycling mode on the V3 Pro, and at 50% brightness, you'll get to about 25 hours. And if you take the brightness all the way up to 100% with that spectrum cycling, you'll see about 13 hours of battery life. So that's still obviously enough to get through most work days. And if you keep the cable handy, you can just plug it in when you're done and be ready to go for the next day. Uh, but yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. So overall, wrapping up here, um, this new wireless flagship lineup from Razer 
is pretty incredible in my opinion. I definitely think the Black Shark V2 and now V2 Pro are the best headsets that Razer offers. And also with the THX profiles, uh, it's one of the only kind of spatial audio modes that I really find myself actually using on a headset. I've been a huge fan of the Death Adder. It was one of the first gaming mice that I ever bought. And to have a wireless version with, you know, all the updated optical switches and sensors, uh, I'm really happy to have that in my battle station. And the Black Widow V3 Pro is also a great wireless addition to Razer's lineup. And that'll do it for our review of the new wireless flagship lineup from Razer. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.